It's Winter Picks Dinner. Wizard Edition. We're wizards. wizards. Hey, man, fam, we are back with another episode of Winter Picks Dinner, the show where we get overly competitive with rock, paper, scissors to choose our next meal. This time we are in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter and Universal Orlando, so that means we are stuck in only Hogsmeade or Diagon Alley. It's going to be great. It's going to be fun. We're going to show you tips and tricks and some of the best eats in Harry Potter. It's going to be seriously ridiculous. Ten points to Slytherin. Let's go. The way Winter Picks Dinner works is we are going to have a multi-course meal here in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. We are going to have drinks, appetizers, entrees, desserts, drinks again, and a secret bonus special wizarding round. Ooh, bonus wizard round. Before each round, we are going to play a game of rock, paper, scissors. The winner of that game gets to choose where we are eating. But some strategery is involved because once we've visited a location, you cannot go back. Let the feast begin. First up, drinks. It's a hot day. I'm a thirsty girl. I'm ready. On shoot. Yes. Ready? Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. I have an idea. Okay. We're in Harry Potter. We're in the Wizarding World. This feels very muggle of us to do rock, paper, scissors. What if we said like different spells? Like we said like stupefied Crucio Avada Kedavra. Oh yes, because that last one just beats everything. Yeah. That's true. I would just only throw Avada Kedavra. Um, or like Obliviate or like we did different spells or we did like- Obliviate just means you forgot. So I yeah. forget everything. So they, or we could do like Resurrection Stone, Cloak of Invisibility, Elder Wand. Yeah, because the wand definitely- Okay, but you know what I'm saying? Like we could do like Snitch, Broomstick, uh -huh. Bludger. But without the broom, none of those things matter. What about? But we could go like, you got one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about cauldron? Uh huh. Parchment. Great. Quill. So just the wizard words for the muggle words. Yeah. Okay, but when we shoot, we say stupefy. stupefy. All right, I can do it. Okay. Yep. It's gonna be a mouthful every time. Yep. It's gonna be super great. We get, can we go a little slow this first time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. Cauldron, parchment, quill, stupefy. Ooh. Oh. Okay. Double the quill. Double the quill. We're in our OWLs. All right. Ready. Cauldron, Cauldron, parchment, quill, stupefy. This is getting crazy. This is. Okay. Are you ready? You, uh, you in here? Who's to say? I need to Zone protego it. my ready? mind. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Cauldron, Cauldron parchment, parchment, quill, stupefy. stupefy. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, right that would be side. scissors. Yeah. Got it. I don't love that. What do you do? Okay. okay. So we do have a number of options for beverages in the Wizarding World, either in Hogsmeade or in Diagon Alley. There's butter beer. There is the Hog's Head. I suppose if you really wanted to get nippicky, we could go to the Three Broomsticks, or we could hop on the train, go to like the Hopping Pot, the Leaky Cauldron. No question, the Hog's Head. Plus, I really want to hang out in Hogsmeade for a little bit. The Hog's Head is the tavern attached to the Three Broomsticks, and it is where you can find a variety of beverages, adult or otherwise. And we are going here specifically because at the Hog's Head and across the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, you can find very specific brews that are only made for the Wizarding World. They are the Dragon Scale, the Wizard's Brew, and the Hog's Head Brew. Now, the Wizard's Brew can only be found at Diagon Alley, and the Hog's Head Brew can only be found naturally enough here at the Hogshead Tavern. As a pro tip, I often recommend getting your butter beer here at the Hogshead as well. They sell all three versions of drinkable butter beer, hot, cold, and frozen. The lines are usually shorter here than at the Three Broomsticks or at the butter beer carts in this land. Also note that they cannot sell things like a Jack and Coke, but they do have some variety of alcoholic beverages. If you wanted to say do like a vodka and lemonade, they can do that. There's just no Coca-Cola products here in the Wizarding World. Um, I'm going to get the hog's head. What about you? I'm going to get a secret. Ooh. May I please have a triple layer beer with Guinness, Hogshead, and Strongbow? Thank you. So fancy. I know. <laughs> it's a secret. <sighs> Cheers. Cheers. Tastes like victory. I feel like a winner anyway because I got a delicious beer. So. 
I like that attitude. Yeah. I'm not a real winner, though, to be clear. I didn't win yet. You I will. I will. The Hogshead Brew is a delightfully mid-body brew that has some mild caramel notes, a little bit toasty, kind of hoppy. Not super hoppy like an IPA. Uh, a very refreshing, easy drinking beer with a lot of flavor. And what about you and your fancy stuff? This is a secret beer. It used to be... <sighs> whisper it, secret. This is a secret beer. Maybe don't whisper. It used to be called the Deadly Hallows, but they cannot call it that for trademark reasons. <laughs> so... If you'd like to order this, you have to say, I would like a triple layer beer with Guinness, Hogshead Brew, and Strongbow Cider. And they will give you this beautiful layered beer. Now, it used to look more layered. The Strongbow that they changed recipe, so it used to be very distinct, three different layers. Now it's kind of two, but it's delicious. Two, two and a half. Yeah, something like that. It is quite delicious, um, and I like it because you get to have the Guinness and the Hogshead, which are both heavier, um, but it's balanced really nicely with the crispness of the Strongbow. Plus, it's just fun to order a secret drink and be, like, cool because you ordered a secret drink. Very Slytherin to order a secret drink, I would say. Um, but I would say if there's, like, a really long line, I don't order this just to be helpful to the team member. But delicious. But you didn't hear it from us. Nope. Also want to remind everyone. Um, I talked about this in the Secrets of the Wizarding World video I did way back, one of the first videos on the channel, but not a lot of people realize that there are discounted beverages here in the Wizarding World. If you buy the souvenir butterbeer mug at places like the Hogshead, you can actually refill it with muggle drinks outside of the Wizarding World for less than $2. So you can put soda and lemonades and things like that. You can also, in the Wizarding World, put in the lemonade and the teas, which is nice. Also, if you buy the Hogshead mug, uh, you can refill it with the Wizarding Wizarding weird beers. The wizarding weird beers. Wizarding weird beers. <laughs> hey guys, we, we're professionals. Take two. If you buy the Hogshead mug, you can refill it with the Wizarding World beers at a discounted rate, and out in the Muggle world, domestic beers like Bud Light at a discounted rate. So if you're going to be here for a few days, or you think you're going to want to have more than one beverage, those are two great deals not a lot of people know about. Cheers. Let's take our beers and go watch the show. Yeah. Boom. 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 I'm watching it right now. Boom, boom. I can't do acrobatics though. Right or ribbon dance. <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to Hopsy. It's so wonderful to see everyone out here today. So you can't wait to show you on your birthday. Worthy. At the boys of, of Durmstrang sure think so. It's comical to watch. Yeah. The, Make sure these, you watch like, on the side. <laughs> oh, it's a show within a show that we love to see. Yeah. I love the little shows at the Wizarding World. You've got... You've got a helicopter. It's so magical. Look at that. How does that whirly gig go? Okay, Arthur Weasley. What exactly is the function of a rubber duck? I love the little shows in Wizarding World. Over here, you've got the Tri-Wizard uh, Spirit Rally, which we just saw. You've also got the Frog Choir and Diagon Alley. You've got Celestina Warbeck and the Tales of Beat of the Bard with the puppet show, The Tale of the Three Brothers. They're just fun. And if you've got a butterbeer or a drink or a little snack to just feel immersed into the land. So definitely check the app for the times for these shows when you're here. Yeah, uh, they are a very fun watch. I have to know, though. Yes. Would you rather attend Beaubaton or Durmstrang? Because we know in the books they're both co-ed schools. I the thought, movies with the books. I, I thought you were going to ask what shows my favorite, and I was going to say the Frog Choir, but now I have to think. Except for I don't have to think. If I can't go to Hogwarts, I want to go to Beau Baton because it's in France, and France has cheese. Next yeah, hard question. agree. Hard <laughs> agree. Hard. Yes, everybody, let's go to Siberia and be, be in the tundra. Chilly. I don't do well being cold, so definitely France. Yeah, France for sure. All right. Appetizers. Ah. I have some ideas. You do. I do. First, I got to win, though. Remember, cauldron, parchment, quill, stupefy. Okay, I'm ready. We can go slow if you'd like. I'm okay. Okay, ready? Yep. Cauldron, cauldron parchment, parchment, quill, stupefy. There, there. Appetizer time. Okay, for appetizers, there are a wealth of options. 
If we wanted to stay local, we could go to the Three Broomsticks. I, they have some pasties that I'd like to enjoy. But alternatively, if we take the train, there are jacket potatoes that are pretty nice. We could always pop into the Leaky Cauldron. There are pasties on the other side too. Oh, there are? Yeah, at the Hopping Pot. Oh, the Hopping Pot also has pasties. Ah. Uh, if you didn't want to knock out Three Broomsticks right now. I think I want to knock out the Three Broomsticks. Bold. Bold move, Bold. Todd. Let's see how it works out for him. We're going to go to the Three Broomsticks and get some pasties. The Three Broomsticks is one of the main dining options here in the Wizarding World. All the Leaky Cauldron is the main one found in Diagon Alley. Now, their main features, if you're not getting pasties like us, is the Great Feast, which has chicken or short ribs and some amazing veggies like corn being presented, as well as scalloped potatoes. But we're not here for that. We are here for pasties. Are you ready? I love pasties, so yes. Also, it didn't matter to me as long as Leaky Cauldron's still in play for lunch because I don't fish and chips and those are on both sides, so. Oh, thinking ahead. The food has arrived. Here are our beef pasties and side salad. I myself picked up the pear cider. This is a non-alcoholic option, but still fizzy and I hope delicious. And what did you get? I got one of my favorite of the non-alcoholic beverages they serve here in the Wizarding World, excluding butterbeer. There's a lot of wizarding beverages, I've realized. Like, any fruit you want, they make a beverage. Wizards love a beverage. Wizards love beverages. This one is the pumpkin fizz, which is less sweet than a pumpkin juice, and it's fizzy like a LaCroix. So when you're a basic, like I am, a basic witch, if you will, you get it. Nice. Oh, it's so delicious. It tastes like fall. It's cinnamon in me. Cinnamon and, 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 <laughs> and nutmeg, and it's got pumpkin, and it's delicious. It's not for everybody, but if you like pumpkin, give it a try. Uh, full disclosure, I've never had this before, and I'm a fan of a pear flavor, but the artificial pear frightens me a bit, so. Huh. He's confused. He's confunded, even. Anyway, this is, um, it's reminiscent of an apple juice with sort of how it hits the tongue, but with some nice pear flavor. I haven't gotten any fizz yet, but I'm patient, so I'll give it time. Would you drink it again? I feel like the answer's no. <laughs> I'm delighted to try it. <laughs> and I think that this may be uh, the, the last time I do, but it's hydrating. Cheers. Buttery, flaky crust, a good amount of filling, very well seasoned and very savory with the richness of the buttery exterior. I am, um, ooh, I'm a big fan. The, the meat filling reminds me of what comes on the shepherd's pie jacket potato where it's like beef and carrots and peas. That would have been a good option as well, but I love the pasties. If you don't want to get the pasties with the salad, you can also order these at the hopping pot, though they might not be listed, so you'll feel super secretive when you order them, you know. Kind of like a triple layered beer that might have been ordered earlier. <laughs> I love getting the pasties, um, especially over in Diagon Alley, because I like to enjoy them while watching one of the shows. And I feel like if you're not in the mood for a full hearty meal, but you still want a savory bite here in the Wizarding World, they're a good choice. All right, delicious pasties consumed. Yes. It's time for an entree. All right, I'm gonna win one. You are. I just know it. Ready? Yep. On stupefy. Yep. Cauldron, Cauldron parchment, parchment, shears, shears. stupefy. Shears? It's quill. It's quill. Shears? What are we in? It's herbology? It's quill. You lost that, by the way. I, that, that does not count. You did not say the proper words. Fine. Mm -hmm. Ready? Cauldron, Cauldron parchment, parchment, quill, shears, stupefy. Okay. Well, hold on. Okay. 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 Cauldron, Cauldron parchment, quill, quill stupefy. Boop. Aha. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Hello, Doctor Smile, friend. Well, there really is only one choice, and that is the leaky cauldron. So we're gonna take the Hogwarts Express. <sighs> I love that train. Headed to the Hogwarts Express here at Hogsmeade. The Hogwarts Express is a mode of transportation between the two parks as well as an attraction, which means you do need a park-to-park -park ticket to ride it. 
Also, for my diehard Harry Potter fans, note that it is different what you see out the windows based on which way you're traveling. So I think for a big Harry Potter fan, it's worth it to ride it twice. However, you usually can walk between the two parks faster than the train will get you. Luckily, it's only a 10 minute wait right now, which is perfect. And uh, here we go, all aboard. All right, made it off the train, and now we're headed into Diagon Alley for our entree. You know what I love about the train? Tell me. How everyone that you see is definitely alive. Like Fred oh. and Matt I'm Moody. Oh. Voldemort. Okay, that one's, yeah. But the other two are sad. <laughs> I also love how real Hermione sounds. Yeah, it's the same actress. That's definitely Emma Watson. For sure. In all reality, I do love the train as a as a Harry Potter nerd, but not as much as I love what we're about to do. Just walk into Diagon Alley. The view. Ugh. Beautiful. You just can't beat it. You just can't beat it. The Leaky Cauldron is the main restaurant here on the Diagon Alley side of Wizarding World. Similar to Three Broomsticks, it's like a hybrid quick service, full service. You will order with the Witches and Wizards or through mobile order and then go to a table. If you mobile order, you'll type in the number that's on your table. And then either way, the team members will bring out your food to you. If you need something like extra condiments or a glass of water, there are Witches and Wizards wandering around that can help you with that as well. I just love it in the Leaky Cauldron. I think it is so beautiful. The detail in these restaurants is unbelievable. The forced perspective really makes it feel like it's going back further and further. I also love this flying buttress detail that a lot of people miss. If you look closely, the carvings on these different uh, pieces up here, you've got a hippogriff, you've got a dragon, you've got a unicorn. I just think it looks really old and aged. I love the moving portraits. It's just such a delight to be in here. The food and drinks have arrived. I pick up the plowman's platter, which is a feast of English cheese, crusty bread, a field green salad, roasted tomatoes, cornichon pickles, an apple beet salad, Branston pickle, and scotch eggs. It's worth noting that you can get the plowman's for one, for two, or for four. What'd you get? Got it for two. For two. For one Allen. But <laughs> one Allen, two people. Two, two regular people. <laughs> Molly picked up the fish and chips. My favorite. She also nabbed the... This is the Tun Tung Tying Lemon Squash. It's basically wizard lemonade, and each of them have a, uh, a lemon right in there. If you look at that, they squeeze a whole lemon right in that drink. Oh. And I myself picked up the peach tree fizzing tea. Another new beverage I haven't had before. Maybe it will be better than your pear cider. One can hope. I love the fish and chips here. Having talked to the chefs, it's never frozen fish. It's always a nice light fish, like a, like a cod, something uh, with some very delicious flaky crust. I always put an obscene amount of malt vinegar on there. And then they've also got house-made tartar sauce. Cheers. <laughs> Just cheers. It's so good. It's easily my favorite savory thing in the wizarding world, which there's not a ton of savory. The, the wizards do like their sweets, but the fish is always cooked perfectly. The crust and the, the batter is light and flaky. The house-made tartar sauce incredible love the little acidity and zest from the lemon the chips are also seasoned well they're like wedge fries i like to dip those in the sauce as well i often get the kids portion of this because you get a little bit less but you get the same meal so i can eat more wizarding world things but it's great washing it down with my lemon squash Ooh, it's so good it's tart it's like the best country fair lemonade you've ever had where you can tell they made it fresh it's not from a powder tart and a little sweet very refreshing on a hot day I'm very content right now, even though I lost. Okay, we're gonna try to make a bite here out of some of the crusty bread, a big hunk of cheese, and then vegetables, because we're healthy in this house. And then I'm gonna dip it into our dressing. I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do it, but it's how I'm gonna do it. Cheers. That's a mustard. Take some cheese, don't mind me. Take away. Is that like an apple relish situation? Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Everything on this plate is very high quality. The bread, 
dense. Salad is light and fresh and refreshing. The cheese is rich. It all works very, very well together. Uh, and then there's a scotch egg. Yeah. Get in there. Let's get into this. Not for me. A scotch egg is sausage wrapped around a hard boiled egg. Is that right? Yep. Fried sausage wrapped around a hard boiled egg. With some breading on the exterior. I'm sure that it is traditional and very tasty for some. Um, it is just an interesting combination of textures that throws me off a little bit. And I wish that the sausage was more spicy and a little bit more herbaceous to sort of offset the punch of the egg on the back end. Did you just dip that into the mustard? Yeah, I'm gonna try it now. I've had the scotch egg before and I do think the mustard helps a lot. I agree that I wish it was more sausage forward. You can see there's not a ton of sausage on there, but there's a lot of egg. It's not bad. And you can add just one of these on the side just if you want to try it. But I do think it's traditional, but it's definitely not the best scotch egg in the world. Oh, going back for more. Went in Diagon Alley. And now for the peach tree fizzing tea. I hope it's fizzy. And peachy. Oh yeah, I'm a fan of that. Sweet tea, a little carbonation, and a peach over top. That's just a good peach sweet tea with some carbonation, y'all. Listen to me, y'all. It's like I'm back in the south. You're in the UK, Alan. South of London. We're in Scotland. No, we're in London. We gotta take the train back to Scotland in a little bit. We do. It's tasty though. I do love this, very refreshing and light. I really do like the Plowman's Platter. I've always wanted to try it, so this was a good time to do so. But I do think if you're coming to Wizarding World, this is not my must get. What do you think? I mean, it's nice, but it's a lot of food. I also just think like fish and chips, I think are a must get. Again, they're one of my favorite foods here. And here at the Leaky Cauldron, as opposed to being the great feast, like three room six, it's a little more traditional English fare. They've also got bangers and mash. They've got cottage pie, shepherd's pie, toad and hole. So I think those are probably more fun and unique things to try than a platter full of salad and cheese. That said, I'm glad I have tried said platter full of salad and cheese. We can mark it off the list. Entrees had and enjoyed. I did enjoy my fish and chips per usual. And now I'm ready for something sweet and to win around. You got this. That's very nice of you. On Stupefy? Yep. Cauldron, Cauldron parchment, parchment, quill, quill Stupefy. Ooh, nice. Are you ready? Yeah. Cauldron, Cauldron parchment, parchment, quill, quill Stupefy. Okay. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Cauldron, Cauldron parchment, parchment, quill, Stupefy. It always comes down to desserts, the sweet treats. A thousand points to slither in. <sighs> Feels good. Feels good to, to win one, even though my record is still quite bad today. Um, we could go into Sugar Plums right here, which is the sweet shop. It's not as big or as good as Honey Dukes, but I do like Ginger Dudes and Pumpkin Pasties. Of course, there's Butterbeer, but who am I kidding? We're obviously going to Florian Fortescue's. Florian Fortescue's Ice Cream Parlor is the ice cream shop in Diagon Alley, the one that Harry visits quite often during the books, especially in Prisoner of Azkaban when he gets to spend those few extra weeks before school staying at the Leaky Cauldron. They have a variety of flavors, both soft serve and hard pack at Florian Fortescue's, and they range from the usual to the unexpected. Soft serve includes the famous butterbeer ice cream, as well as classics like chocolate, chocolate, mint, and vanilla, and some unusual flavors like banana, orange, marmalade, and toffee apple. As far as the hard pack goes, again, you've got some classic flavors like chocolate, vanilla, some unusual flavors like salted caramel blondie and sticky toffee pudding, chocolate raspberry, and some really unusual flavors like Earl Grey and lavender, clotted cream, and chocolate chili. You can add toppings to any of the ice creams and they have a few souvenir cups with specialty sundaes as well. But for me, I love the strawberry peanut butter because one, it's delicious, Two, I love peanut butter and strawberry. And three, it's Harry's favorite flavor. So I always like to get that. Mm. So like I said, this is strawberry peanut butter. This is my favorite of all the flavors. I love peanut butter and jelly. And I love that it's not super sickly sweet like some of the other flavors. Plus, it's Harry's favorite flavor. So, you know, that's cool too. If you had the peanut butter and jelly milkshake over at 50s Primetime Cafe in Hollywood Studios, it's similar. Definitely taste the strawberry. Definitely like peanut butter like this one. I do. 
but all of their flavors are so rich. You can get two different flavors in a cone, which I highly recommend if you want to try a few different things. All their ice cream's awesome. The Butterbeer ice cream's awesome. One of my favorite desserts anywhere. I feel good having won this one, and I feel like I will continue to win moving forward. <laughs> you want to see the tales of the three brothers? The tales of Beetle the Bard? I do want to see that. Then let's. <laughs> I love those little shows. I love the puppets in this one, it's so cool. The entire setup there is stunning and such a cool representation of the art style from the film to stage. If you could have one of the Deathly Hallows, which one would you want? Say it on the count of three. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Invisibility the cloak. Yeah, I stand by it. Wand. You could become invisible with the wand. Everything else is cured by the wand. I would have the cloak, you'd never find me. I could, if, death can, if death can't find, wand, if could death find, can't find me, find neither you. can the wand. Hominum Revelio. Gotcha. Boom. That Done. reveals a spell. No, that what? reveals a person. A hominum is a man. I'd still pick the cloak. I'm going wand. Let us know what you'd pick down in the comments. And now we must duel once again for second round of drinks. I feel good this time. I feel good. So do I. Delicious ice creams had. A play has been seen. Yes. Now it's time for our second round of drinks. All right. You hear the train? It's right there. It's right above us. It's right there, the choo-choo. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Cauldron, Cauldron parchment, parchment, quill, quill stupefy. Bonk. And I'm back. There are really only two options left for drinks. That's either Hopping Pot or the Fountain of Fair Fortune. I think we're just gonna go with Fountain of Fair Fortune because I really want a Wizard's Brew, which is the other exclusive beer that you can only find here in Diagon Alley. Remember, Hogshead Brew over in Hogsmeade. The Wizard's Brew here in Diagon Alley. Dragon Scale everywhere. Fountain of Fair Fortune is a place where one might find many beverages, adult or otherwise, here in Diagon Alley. It has butter beer, some of the other non-alcoholic treats that you could find in the Wizarding World, but we are going for the exclusive brews that you can only find here. Me, myself, and I, that's the Wizard's Brew. Molly, what are you feeling? I'm going for the Dragon Scale. Let's round out the trifecta and get them all today. Absolutely. Also, if you do find yourself inside of the Fountain of Fair Fortune, I ask that you please pay close attention to those beautiful etchings in the mirrors on the side of the shop. They are stunning and so very detailed. I love that it actually has the fountain as well as the Deathly Hallow symbol. Ah. <sighs> Got our second beers from the Fountain of Fair Fortune. Cheers. Cheersies. What am I drinking? You're drinking a Dragon Scale. Dragon Scale. I always get confused. Ooh. Now the Wizard's Brew is dark. It is a darker brew. It's like a porter, right? Mm. A little bit more of like a stout-ish. Um, chocolate flavors and notes that you would find with this type of beer. It is still refreshing, but I am going to tell you, it's not for everybody. I think you need to enjoy that sort of chocolatey richness of a beer. It is kind of like having another meal or dessert. We already had dessert. Double dessert. Yeah, double dessert. No one's mad about that. The Wizard's Brew, on the other hand, is closer Yours to- Yours is the dragon skin. <laughs> Literally. I don't know why I feel like the dragon should be darker, but this is the dragon <laughs> scale, I think. Mm -hmm. I was just handed a beer, if I'm being honest. This is the dragon scale. And it is more like an Irish red. So it's certainly darker and a little hoppier than if you're used to like a lager or a, a Pilsner or a pale ale or something. Um, but it's not hoppy, super hoppy like an IPA. I actually think it's a little bit lighter tasting than it looks. It looks like it's gonna be really, really heavy. Um, so this is probably the lightest of the three customizable beers unless you do any kind of blend. I like it. It's certainly not the kind of beer I would order normally, but when in 
Diagon Alley. You do like the wizards and dragons, apparently, do. You know how Hagrid gets a dragon? I do. Norbert. Oh, bless him. Look, he knows his mummy. <laughs> Hello, Norbert. Mm -hmm. um, if you could have a magical pet, what would you pick? Dragon. Oh, that would not be my answer. 100% dragon. I think I would want a unicorn or a, a niffler or a hippogriff. Because a hippogriff I could fly on. And a niffler. Fly on a dragon. Yeah, but they're scarier. And a niffler, I could be like, go get me stuff. Go fetch me jewels. I could ask the dragon to do that too. I don't think the dragon's quite as dainty to go like with a little niffler guy. You don't need a dainty person to go fetch hordes of treasure. And a, and a, you know, unicorn's just pretty. And now, introducing to you the super secret wizarding bonus round. Okay, viewer, I want you to know something that this choreography was unrehearsed. Uh, I, I know that you couldn't tell. It looks as if a professional has come together and Super created Super secret this. wizard bonus round. Anyway, the bonus round is this. Instead of playing rock, paper, scissors, we have introduced the butterbeer bonus round. Butterbeer bonus round. But it's not any butterbeer bonus round. No, it's not. Because they recently introduced non-dairy butterbeer, meaning Ooh. anyone can enjoy butterbeer, including our vegan and lactose intolerant friends. We love inclusivity. So we are going to do a blind taste test to see if I can tell the difference between the classic and the vegan flavor. It's not a blindfold test because you don't have a blindfold, but you're gonna close your eyes anyway. I'll pretend. No, yes. I'll really close my eyes, but it's not a blindfold. Yes, we use our imaginary blindfold, also known as our eyeballs. All right, here we go. Butterbeer me. I shall butterbeer you, I'm viewers. Do you, know, do you know which one it is? I do know which do one it is. Do they know which one it is? They do know which one it is. All right, let's Viewers, I'm showing this to you, and it will be clear why. All right, now taste this. Oh, that's unsettling. That is so scrumptious. All right, I have a guess, but I would like to try both, please. All right, we're gonna try both. Viewers, take a look at this. That means it's vegan. There you are. Vegan. You're correct. Didn't even take a second. The difference is in the foam. And now that I'm looking at it with my eyeballs, you can see that there's a slightly yellower tone to the vegan one. But the vegan foam has to be made out of like coconut milk, probably. And it's, as someone who's had a lot of butterbeer, immediately you can tell that this is not dairy and that this is. However, they're both still delicious. Um, I still prefer the, the dairy one because it tastes more like a cupcake. This one tastes like a coconut cupcake. Yeah, that's 100% coconut milk. But it's still great, and I love that everyone can enjoy butterbeer now. They also have the frozen, if you would like to do the frozen vegan. So here's our secret butterbeer category. Boom, and if you want to see more butterbeer, I did a video where I tried all seven different kinds of butterbeer prior to the vegan one being in existence. But if you want to see the ice cream and the frozen and the clotted cream and the fudge and all the things, check that out. One last bonus game, butterbeer mustache off. Okay. Yeah. Where's the thickest part of the cream? Oh yeah, I think I nailed it. I think I nailed it. I'm sorry. We both look really good. I think this should be our, our new go-to. Who do you think won, viewer? I'm so sticky. Let us know in the comments. How's the dragon? Fire effects, fire effects, The dragon just effects. went off. It goes off every 10 minutes for your photos. On the 10. Well, friends, that wraps up this very magical edition of Winter Picks Dinner. Wizard Picks Dinner. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know what other Wizarding World and Beyond content you'd like to see and your favorite treat to have here in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. In the meantime, friends, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you are new and follow us on all of our socials. And if you'd like to participate in conversations with us and the Mam Fam community, join us on our Discord. Links are down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been so magical. It has been. Bye. Cheers. <laughs> Let's go to Sugar Plums. Heck yeah.